Hey everybody, what's up from Pokemon Classics, reminding you that the classics never go out of style. You know, McDonald's was in the news today, along with Pokemon. You see, it's the 25th anniversary, and with that came a promotional item, Happy Meal toys, randomized packs, and they are going off the shelves. Does McDonald's have shelves? They're going out like hotcakes. And I think there's some ethical implications to consider with this. And so I want to talk about that flipper scalper mentality, which is pretty prevalent in every aspect of the franchise. But here it seems a little bit more disingenuous than in some other areas. So this is not a judgment on anybody. This is not financial advice. This is just my take on what I see as a current event. So I wanted to unfold this, unwrap this double cheeseburger of McDonald's Pokemon madness and uh, sink our teeth into the beef of the situation. Is that enough metaphor for you? Now this is a situation that's pretty near and dear to my heart. Obviously, as a collector myself, I'm looking at the best long-term interest of our hobby, and I don't see this being a good thing for us. On the other hand, I've worked as an employee at McDonald's before, back when I was 14 and 15, and lived through some of those situations with really popular Happy Meal toys, and having to sell them in mass quantities to customers that wanted them, regardless if they were the intended audience, children, or not. That's just the way the business works. So I don't intend this to be specific criticism levied at any individual out there that happens to be buying these cards, whether it's because you like them, or because you're looking for that resale potential, or even the grading aspect of it. But I do think we need to consider short-term interest versus long-term best interest of the hobby. And somewhere in there, there's gotta be a balancing ground. And I don't know if this is in the best long-term interest of the hobby. Anyway, for those of you that missed out, let's catch up on all of the action unfolding with McDonald's and Pokemon. This week launched a promotional Happy Meal item, a Pokemon pack containing four randomized cards from all the various starters of each generation of Pokemon. Now there are 25 cards in total, However, there is also a holographic version of each one, totaling 50 cards in the set. Now, each pack would come with four randomized cards, including one holographic card and three non-holographic cards. Naturally, these would become a collectible item and a very speculative item for collectors everywhere. One particularly noteworthy feature of these cards is the addition of a 25th anniversary stamp over on the right-hand side of the card, marking these cards and their historical context as part of Pokemon's 25th anniversary celebration. Naturally, this is something that would appeal to collectors everywhere who would want a piece of that history and that nostalgia. But this is where things get a little bit tricky. You see, people are hoarding these cards in mass quantities, buying them out from the store before they can even be distributed in Happy Meals to children. And that raises a whole host of ethical implications that personally, I find to be a little bit disturbing. Let's just check out some of these news articles. One news article describes the issue this way, that all of these cards are being bought out, sold out by scalpers, primarily adults looking to gain profit by reselling the cards through websites like Facebook Marketplace or eBay, sometimes one at a time, and in some cases entire sealed boxes of product that was originally meant for distribution through Happy Meals to children. Another news article summarizes it this way, due to the popularity of the idea with both younger and older customers, some McDonald's restaurants are already running out of the Pokemon cards. It's also possible for customers to purchase extra packs with just a single Happy Meal order, fast food companies report. Large lots of the card packs have since appeared on sites like eBay, where a set of 10 packages can fetch up to $60. I don't know if you guys were questioning the math of this like I was, but a Happy Meal is under $6, at least it is in my area, which means that an individual could turn a profit from every single pack that they purchased, let alone the food. Hopefully that's not getting wasted. But looking at those numbers, if people are buying entire boxes and turning around and selling those packs individually, or even collectively as an entire sealed case, that's a decent amount of money. Regardless of how you feel about reselling an item, flipping an item, scalping an item, whatever you want to call it, this situation to me is a little bit different, since these aren't cards that are open and available on the typical free market. You know, we think of a stock market, and that's part of the game. You're buying, you're making an investment, you're selling stocks. 
everybody that's engaging in that process is a voluntary adult. However, here, the targeted demographic are children, and these are products intended for children in a Happy Meal, a vehicle that's, again, intended for kids. And so I do think it's doing them a disservice if people are looking to exploit that potential as an opportunity without looking at the ramifications of damaging that demographic of the hobby. And that's an important demographic. Already people have taken to Twitter and other social media platforms, calling on McDonald's and Pokemon to work collectively to limit the number of packs purchased by adults. Whether that's putting a limitation on how many individual packs can be purchased per customer, or perhaps requiring their purchase only with Happy Meals rather than buying the pack separately. Nevertheless, we're seeing a number of sales popping up on Facebook Marketplace, on places like eBay, sometimes for individual packs and sometimes for entire, seal entire sealed cases of up to 150 packs at once. As you can see in this picture, those are going for about 800 and up to $1,000. In fact, there's even news articles out there providing tips and strategies on how to find these cards because of how difficult they are to acquire. Some of the suggestions included things like calling McDonald's ahead of time in order to inquire about the availability of the cards or schedule a time when a new shipment is coming in. And in some cases, they even suggested driving around every McDonald's and making a little tour out of it, an adventure, which although it could be fun, it's sad that it really has to resort to that. That's one of the things that makes Pokemon so enjoyable to me and collectors all over the world is it's a hobby, it's an interest that's shared by so many people globally. That's something that can unite us. And if we're pushing out an entire generation of people to not have that experience, the same experience that I and many of you grew up with, I think we're doing them a disservice. I think we're prioritizing profits over people, the joy of the hobby and the experiences that it comes with over money, over a bottom line. And that could be a double-edged sword. Again, there's no judgment here if you're after these cards. I totally understand as a fellow collector. But as I'm looking at how this situation is unfolding and the extreme lengths people have gone to turn a profit, I see some harm in this. And I think that there's really two important questions that we need to ask ourselves. Is it ethical? And is it good for the future of our hobby? I think it makes us look bad, if I'm being honest. I think it makes us look greedy, if I'm being honest. I think it makes it look like we're intentionally targeting those that are the most vulnerable, children. And I don't like that. Now, this is an entirely different game when we're talking about collectibles on eBay, or we're talking about buying on Amazon or Facebook. Those are marketplaces designed for adults. People enter those marketplaces willing to buy, willing to sell. It's a mutually agreed upon place for people to do business. But when we're looking at McDonald's Happy Meals, that's a vehicle solely intended for children. Now let me be the first to say that there's nothing illegal about this, and that it doesn't make you a bad person if you're buying these packs in mass quantities because you're passionate about Pokemon. I think that's a good thing. However, I do think that it loses focus on the future and what's in the best long-term interest of the hobby as a whole something that we're all responsible for maintaining and safeguarding for future generations. And this is what takes me to point number two. We need to ask ourselves, is this good for the Pokemon hobby? And personally, I don't think it is. I mean, first of all, it's not even a great investment. This is highly speculative. These cards are printed in such mass quantity being distributed at McDonald's all over the world that there's no way that those prices are going to be sustainable. So is that short-term benefit worth the long-term trade-off? Is there long-term value there? Frankly, I do see that there's some profitability if you're first to market here, especially if you can get those cards graded before anybody else. Yes, there might be a few dollars to be made, but at what cost? Second, I think this is pretty exploitative. If we think about the target and who's suffering the most out of this, again, that's the kids kids that enjoy Pokemon that have very little accessibility to it otherwise, who don't have the type of capital to throw around to go to a McDonald's and buy out the entire supply of Happy Meal toys. There's a power and control imbalance there that I find to be problematic at best, 
and unethical at worst. Thirdly, and most importantly, I see this as a sustainability issue. The hobby of Pokemon is only as strong as the next generations that are feeding into it. As the elders in this hobby, I think we have a pretty profound responsibility to not only make sure that the hobby is well sustained for that generation, but that the new generations have access points, realistic places where they can come in and enjoy the hobby and participate in it as equals. And if we take away those opportunities by buying out all the modern product from Target, and then going to McDonald's and buying out all of the 25th anniversary cards from the Happy Meals, we're just including that generation. The reason I'm so passionate about this is as a fellow collector who grew up with exposure to Pokemon and opportunities, it makes me sad that there's a generation that may be forced out of Pokemon just due to a lack of accessibility. And when you think about it, our best interest as a hobby, as a whole, is in our collective best interest. We need those younger fans of Pokemon, those younger collectors. They are the future lifeblood of what we love. And I think it's unfortunate when you go to Target, you see that all of the modern product is bought out and even going for a Happy Meal to get a pack of cards that's probably not even worth a whole lot. And all of those have been bought out and scalped as well. I think that does a disservice to the whole hobby, especially to those individuals. Accessibility matters. That's what leads to sustainability. And I know personally that Pokemon has been such a positive experience in my life that that's something that I want future generations to enjoy. And that's only going to be possible if we're good stewards of the hobby. Anyway, guys, let me know what your thoughts are about the whole McDonald's Pokemon situation. It's definitely not how I would expect Pokemon to be in the news, at least not at this point with so much positive stuff going on for Pokemon with the 25th anniversary, with uh, auctions coming up, with Pokemon Day coming up here on the 27th. So I know there's a lot to be excited about, but every once in a while, there's something that I find a little bit disappointing, and I felt obligated to talk about that. Being somebody that's more often on the positive side of Pokemon, there are some things that I think are dangerous out there and, and unfortunate. Anyway, guys, I'm Pokemon Classics, reminding you that the classics never go out of style. Till next time, stay safe, everybody. We'll see you with the next video.